Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing on my soapbox? I'm here to talk about the X-Men. Hey. Okay, so the X-Men is one of my favorite series. Uh, they're just cool, okay? So there's no, like, mutation that happens after they're alive. Like, you're born as a mutant, and you die as a mutant. And unfortunately, you die a lot. So one thing that has definitely died is the hopes of a decent Dark Phoenix movie. So here we go. I'm on the soapbox. Get ready for a rant. Now, I love X-Men. Okay, I can't say enough because I love the X-Men. The comic book came out in 1963. Okay, that means that we've had almost 60 years to get it right. All right, I'm talking about the Dark Phoenix. Really? 60 years, and we still just keep fucking it up. I don't know why, but in the comic book, the original comic book with Dark Phoenix, Jean's hit with radiation uh, out in space, and she acquires the Phoenix. Okay, so she's not born with it. It's not Maybelline, all right? <laughs> so... Jean gets hit with this radiation, and when she tries to repair the McCran, repair the McCran, I'm getting heated. <laughs> she tries to repair the McCran crystal, and she becomes the Dark Phoenix. She starts getting like these dark intentions. She goes evil. Okay, so she decides, hey, this is dangerous. I'm gonna build some walls in my mind because I'm a strong, independent woman that don't need no man. And that's what she does. So now, all of this aside, we have the Hellfire Club. This is gonna be the main villain in the comic book. So we have the Hellfire Club, the Inner Circle, and Mastermind. Mastermind wants to become a part of the Inner Circle. He thinks to do this, he's gonna steal Jean Grey, and that's gonna get him in. Why? <laughs> Why? Why? Why is Jean Grey gonna get him in? I don't know, but that's the story. So that's how we're gonna stick with it. So he creates all of these illusions in her mind, and she goes nuts. Okay, talk about being gaslit. So the X-Men capture her, and they go into like this big psychic battle where Cyclops dies, and Jean just loses her shit, okay? The Dark Phoenix <laughs> just runs rampant, she leaves the galaxy, and you know, that's tiresome work to like destroy the X-Men, leave the galaxy, so she eats a star, because what do women do when we're upset? We eat stuff. So she eats the star, creates a supernova, and wipes out a planet. Now, the intergalactic princess is notified because <laughs> there was just a genocide, so that's something that, you know, I think an intergalactic princess would, would know about. So anyway, Jean is like, okay, cool, I'm full, I'm going back home to Earth. So she goes to Earth, where Professor X, you know, puts up new walls in her mind, the Emperor shows up, there's an unrefusable duel, all this goes down, Cyclops dies again, because <laughs> this poor guy <laughs> just keeps on dying. Uh, and Jean reverts back to Dark Phoenix, breaks down the walls again, and the Empress decides we need to destroy the galaxy. How we went from, like, she killed one planet to, <laughs> well, we're gonna destroy the galaxy. I don't know how that makes sense, but, again, it's the story, and I'm sticking with it. The X-Men decide to stop her. She ends up self-sacrificing. She uh, activates the Kree weapon and disintegrates herself. So she dies a person, as opposed to, like, being the Dark Phoenix and having the galaxy destroyed. That'd be a lot to have on one's content. So, anyway, pretty cool story, pretty straightforward some questions, but that's the original story from almost 60 years ago. Now, <laughs> fast forward. The year is 1995. Baby Amanda is watching the animated series of X-Men. Still super into it. Still pretty close to the comics. I'm on board. Okay. Hellfire Club's not there, but we don't really need them. They're not super important because the inner circle's there. So that's fine. Even as a young child, though, Baby Amanda was upset that Jean Grey was not as much of a badass. She was more of a love interest. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Triangles are not cool. Anyway. Back, back to, back to Jean Grey. So, <sighs> why, why, why do they do this to her? They, they make her self-sacrifice in the end. Everything's going good in this animated series. They do like a whole special on uh, the Dark Phoenix and all that jazz. All the way up at the end, she self-sacrifices and then they bring her back. <laughs> annoying, okay? Still not completely terrible, just a little annoying. Now, we go to 2006. Amanda's now in high school. Still loves X-Men, still a nerd, okay? I'm in high school, 2006. What the fuck? This is where it starts getting really bad, guys. Really, really bad. So they not only take the Dark Phoenix story and they completely rip it to shreds, they mash two stories together to make this movie, The X-Men The Last Stand. Why? Both of these stories can stand alone on their own as independent movies, but now we're gonna put them together because that makes sense. So in this movie, the Phoenix is innate in Jane. Okay, whatever, cool, you do you. There's no intergalactic space travel. <laughs> People don't like space, I guess. Nerds don't like space, said no one ever. But Professor X puts up the walls in her brain as she's a child instead of her being hit with radiation. Super frustrating. Also, in the beginning of the movie, she kills Cyclops. That's the whole reason that she goes dark. It's the death of Cyclops. She just fucking did it herself. No one seems to care. I don't care. You don't care. The X-Men don't care. Like, no one cares. They talk about her being, like, the most powerful mutant, the level 5 mutant, and no one fucking tries to stop her. They even take away the self-sacrifice. In the end, Wolverine kills her. So she doesn't even get to, like, redeem herself. There's no redemption arc. It's pointless. Just ignore the movie. That movie never happened. Fast forward now, 2009, super excited. Dark Phoenix, okay, in theaters. Nerd Amanda, super excited. You said 2009, it's 2019. <laughs> 2019, how do I rewind a rant? <laughs> <laughs> Add 10 years, okay. Fast forward, the year's 2019. 
I'm an adult now. I own a home. I have a full-time adult job. Super excited to see Dark Phoenix. <laughs> Thinking, hey, they finally fixed it. They're gonna do justice to Jean Grey and the Dark Phoenix. I looked at all the trailers, all the inside scoops, everything. They have an amazing cast, they have a decent budget. Everything seems like it's gonna finally work out. <laughs> Something I've been waiting years for. From reading the comics to watching the animated series as a kid and going through high school with whatever bullshit The Last Stand was. Finally, Dark Phoenix. There's no mashup. There's no... Two movies mashed into one. Just one movie. <coughs> they fucked it up again. <laughs> so the beginning and the end are fine. Okay, they do start out in space. Jean Grey's hit with the radiation blast. Excellent. The end, she self-sacrifices. You know, she redeems herself and... Kills herself and in, in hopes to save the world. What happened in the middle? I don't understand. How can you get the front right and the back right, but you can't get the middle right? Stupid. There's no Hellfire Club. There's no Inner Circle. There's no Intergalactic Empress. There's no nothing. Instead, they replace all those characters, all that plot line, with two power-hungry aliens. Where the fuck did they come from? I don't really know. But they're the ones that explain everything to Jean. Very, very frustrating. Oh, wait a minute. You're still in there? Let me wrap it up. <sighs> I guess you're right. I rant about this enough. Um, so, but if you guys have seen any of these movies, or you love the X-Men as much as I love the X-Men, and you want to rant about it with me, please comment, because I, A, love the X-Men, and I loved Fangirl about the X-Men, and I really, really hate these movies, so I really want you to hate them as much as I do. So comment down below, and thanks for watching. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm stopping, because I said 2009, like, threw off my groove. Sorry. No, I mean, I said the wrong date.